one of my closest friends named Sarah didn't know God. I had invited her to church many times before she finally agreed to come. But within weeks of coming, she gave her life over to Jesus. It's now been two years since then, but the transformation that God has made in Sarah's life is absolutely incredible. She's not the same person that she was two years ago. In 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17, it says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. There are three evident changes that should take place in your life once you become a follower of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. It says in this verse that we must begin to live our lives for God. God has called me as an evangelist to my generation. So the way that I share God's love to people is by preaching to them. On the other hand, my good friend Janet fulfills this command by her lifestyle. She lives a lifestyle that reflects what she says and what she believes. She's also a very good listener, so people, they open up to her, and it gives her an opportunity to witness to them and to share her testimony. The second change that takes place once you choose to follow Christ is that you begin to see others and God in a new light, in a new way. In 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it says, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we must regard Christ in this way, we do so no longer. According to this verse, if you are truly living for God, then your view of the world, people, and of God himself will begin to change. You will begin to see others the way God does, with love. And with this, your lifestyle begins to change, and people will begin to see the change that God is doing in your heart. The third change that happens once we choose to follow Christ is that we become a new person. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. There must be transformation inside. You must surrender those last things holding you back, the really hard things to give up. Once you do this, God will begin to use you like you will never believe. There's a young man named Christian in my youth group. He has a friend named Fidel who had never experienced the love of Christ. But because of the love Christian had for Fidel, he invited him to one of our Sunday morning services. On Sunday, March 13th, I saw Christian and Fidel sitting in the back rows of our church, but noticed Fidel was wearing a sling. During service, I felt God telling me to go pray for him. So I went and got two amazing women of God. We laid hands on him, and we asked God for healing. We asked that God would do a work in his life. When we finished, Fidel was able to take off his sling and move his arm all around with no pain. A little later, he got saved and had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, all because of the love someone had for him to invite him. But you know, these amazing things are not only for me, Christian, or for Fidel, but they're for you too. So look at your life. Who are you living for? Are you living for God, or are you living for yourself? How are you viewing God and other people? Are you viewing them from eyes of the Father or eyes of the world? <coughs> Is there anything holding you back? Anything you have not given God control of? We are compelled by Christ's love to live for Him. To see Him in the world He died for through His eyes and to let Him transform us into a new creation. I am living compelled by Christ's love. What is your love compelled by? Thank you.